This is a model of the eye. First, we'll orient ourselves by observing the nasal bones, the nasolacrimal canal. You can even see the concave. So we know that when we're looking from here, this is the lateral side. Over here is the medial side. So first, we're going to take off the levator palpebrae superioris muscle. That's this one. We've exposed the superior rectus muscle. We have on this side the lateral rectus muscle. We'll remove that. We can see over here the medial rectus muscle. And if we look underneath, we see the inferior rectus muscle. You can see it here as well, inferior rectus muscle. Then we have the trochlea of the eye, this little connective tissue piece right here, which wraps around the superior oblique muscle. Down here is the inferior oblique muscle. And then if we bring back the levator palpebrae superioris, we see the lacrimal gland. The lacrimal sac can't be seen on this model, but it would be over here, right around the nasolacrimal duct, which goes through the nasolacrimal canal. On this model, we have a depiction of the nasolacrimal sac, right here, going into the nasolacrimal canal, becoming the nasolacrimal duct. And here we can see the frontal sinus. Again, this side is lateral. We can tell from the nasal bones, and this being the inside of the nose. If we remove part of the eye so we can look on the inside, we'll see this vitreous body filling the vitreous chamber. The vitreous chamber being this space. And then we have the anterior cavity, which is this space up front, which has two parts, the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber. The anterior chamber in front of the iris, posterior chamber behind the iris. And then this is the lens. Take that out. And then we have the optic nerve in the back. And then this white part around the outside is the fibrous tunic. Then we have the vascular tunic in red. And then in beige orange, we have the retina, sometimes referred to as the neural tunic. You can see all these on this model as well. Optic nerve vitreous body inside the vitreous chamber, lens here, retina, vascular tunic in red, fibrous tunic in white, posterior chamber right here where the lens is, we'll take the lens out, anterior chamber here, altogether anterior cavity, and then the iris. Going back to this model, we have a couple layers in the fibrous tunic. We have the sclera, which is the white part itself, and then continuing, also part of the fibrous tunic, is the cornea, this clear part in front of the eye. If we tilt it up a little bit, you can see that there's a clear covering. And then if we look at the vascular tunic in red, we have the pupillary constrictor muscles. So if we look at the iris, we have here pupillary constrictor muscles, and then pupillary dilator muscles, constrictors in the middle, dilators on the outside, and then this hole is the pupil, the pupil is a space, and then we have ciliary bodies, which would be right here if they were more defined, and ciliary zonules, which are suspending the lens in place, or suspensory ligaments. And then we have the choroid, which is this back section of the vascular tunic. And then the retina is this whole section right here. This innermost layer. And it has the macula lutea, which is this in the back, this little dot. And right in the middle, we have the fovea. The fovea is the most focused portion of the retina. And then we have the optic disc. That's this hole right here. This is where your blind spot is. And then we have the aura serrata. So if we look on the inside, we have this little jagged layer that goes all the way around the eye, and that's the aura serrata. We can see these things on this model too. If we take this stuff out, 
we have the fibrous tunic, right? This section being the sclera. The cornea isn't present on this model. And the iris, which was removed from the vascular tunic now. And then we have pupillary constrictor muscles. Again, the ones on the inside. And then pupillary dilator muscles. And then the hole in the middle would be the pupil. And you can see here a little bit, we have ciliary bodies right there. And then we'd have ciliary zonules or suspensory ligaments coming off of those holding the lens in place. And then again, this whole back portion in red is the choroid. And then right here again, we can see the macula lutea and there's a little indentation in this model that signifies the fovea and the optic disc again, and then the aura serrata can again be seen in brown. Here we have a model of the ear within the temporal bone. The part on the outside, the part we usually associate with the ear itself, is the auricle or the pinna. And then if we look on the inside, the external ear is composed of this auricle, the external acoustic meatus or canal, and the tympanic membrane. That's this right here. So sound comes and hits there when you hear things. And then in the middle ear, we have three auditory ossicles. We're going to remove this section to look inside. We have the malleus, the first one. And then we have the incus, the second one. And then we have the stapes, which is this one. So again, malleus, incus, stapes. And then in here, we have the auditory or eustachian tube. And for the middle ear, we have this piece, which is the bony labyrinth. This is a bony section, which is filled with fluids that are involved in your sensation of hearing and proprioception. And then coming off that is the vestibulocochlear nerve. We have two branches, one going to the cochlea, the cochlear branch, and one going to this right here. That's the vestibular branch. So now we're going to look at the bony labyrinth. If we notice that this ear right here, this is the back of the ear, so we know that this side is the posterior side that will help us. So if we first pull out the bony labyrinth and look at this side, the vestibular complex, we have the vestibule, which is this enlargement in the middle, right, that space. And then coming off the vestibule, we have some ampulla, ampullae, plural, ampulla singular. There's these enlargements right before these circular sections. And then for those circular sections, they're called semicircular canals. And we remember this was the back, so we have the posterior semicircular canal, lateral semicircular canal, and anterior semicircular canal. And then if we look at the cochlea, if we were to remove this right here, we'd have the oval window, and then here we would have the round window. So if we look at the cochlea, we look at an internal section, we can see pairs of dots. So this is when the cochlea is spiraling around. It has these two canals going through the whole spiral. And if we look at this model, this is a blown up version of that. Up here we have the scala vestibuli, also known as the vestibular duct, the cochlear duct right here, and the tympanic duct down here, also known as the scala tympani. And then here, we have the vestibular membrane. And then here, this whole section is the organ of corti with a spiral organ. Up top, the tectorial membrane, right here. And then hair cells are vibrating against that tectorial membrane. And then on the bottom, we have the basilar membrane. And then over here on the side, we have the spiral ganglion. This is where the nerves from this organ come and information about the sound is collected.